without necessarily invoking section 4 that talks about the immunity of the president um, as quoted above uh, in my respective opinion the complaint submitted by Namibia Economic Freedom Fighters on the 8th of June 2022 falls outside my mandate for two reasons. One, the words, concepts, including language used in complaint were in reference to violations of criminal law. For example, words such as unlawful conduct, money laundering, theft of money, connived with officials to conceal paper trail of foreign and local subjects to ensure that criminal law are not complied with. They also referred to, uh, and I will summarize it for you, as it was uh, stated in the complaint, it is therefore our considered view that such alleged act by the president are tantamount to violations of the oath of his office. Now, violation of oath of office is one area which I could not find a clear express provisions in our law. However, Article 29 of the Namibian Constitution might possibly provide guidance on this issue. Article 29, sub Article 2, it provides that a president shall be removed from office if a two-third majority of all members of the National Assembly confirmed by a two-third majority of all the members of the National Council adopt a resolution impeaching the president on the ground that he or she has been guilty of a violation of the Constitution or guilty of a serious violation of the laws of the land or otherwise guilty of such gross misconduct or imputed as to render him or her unfit to hold dignity and honor of office of president. Now, in my respective opinion, section uh, serious violations of a president's oath of office could be part of Article 29 of the Indian Constitution. When our laws do not provide sufficient guidance we also look at other jurisdictions elsewhere in the world to guide for guidance. In many common law countries, similar to Namibia's legal system, serious violations of the president's oath of office is a matter that is entrusted with the parliament and not the ombudsman or any other institutions of government. I therefore decline to investigate the complaint submitted by Namibia Economic Freedom Fighters I thank the leadership of Namibia Economic Freedom Fighters for their concern, for guiding against that no one should violate Namibian laws. I hope you will keep the good work and always follow the available legal avenues in doing so.